the circuit boards for the main unit came in. So all this mess here is all kind of translated down into that. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Pretty excited. Um, the rounded corners are, are there, but they're a little bit too small. I think I'm going to make them bigger if I ever make uh, another board again. It's kind of hard to judge how big the rounded corners are going to be when you're just zoomed in. But I guess I could compare them to how big the holes are and the roundness on, on the edges of those. The um, One of these boards, yeah, this one here, uh, it has a little bit of a flood fill issue on the back. It didn't quite fill up all the way there for some reason. Uh, all the electrical connections uh, for the pads are okay, but this corner here just didn't just didn't turn out right. Here's um, here's a here's one that's fine. You can see it's you know nicely filled like it's supposed to be. Um, the other little thing that I noticed too when I got this was it does turn out that the radio module covers up this hole and that hole uh, partially, so it might be a little bit difficult to get screws in. So I'm gonna have to rethink where those those holes are at. Um, I've got my solder paste here and my, I'm going to be doing the hot air reflow method for the first time of to solder this together. So this is the tip that MG Chemicals provided in their little hobbyist solder paste kit and this tip is gigantic. The 1206 size parts that I've got on here uh, the pads are just about as big as the diameter of this tip. So this tip is no good. I gotta go find a different one. This is gigantic. I'm gonna, I have to give this a try though because this is all I've got right now. All right, here's my setup that I'm gonna be trying out for the first time. I've got a little air pump that a buddy of mine got for me and it's what you can use to pick up the service mount parts. So there's a little uh, hole on the top and you can just pick up parts and, and place them uh, by letting, letting your finger off there. So that should work. And I have got, got lucky because it came with a bag of different size needles. And so rather than using this gigantic needle for the uh, solder dispensing, I was able to find a much smaller one. And they're all, they all have the same type of connection on them, luckily. So this is going to work out a lot better, I think. So I've got all my different surface mount parts that I'm going to be using all out here. And uh, I've got the bill of materials from Eagle uh, exported to a text file so I can just confirm things if I need to. And uh, I'm going to give this a shot. All right, let's see if this works. So the solder paste really sticks it down. All right, so here's the little battery charger. And some 1K resistors here, 16, 17, and 18. All right, these are the 10 mega ohm resistors that are used for measuring the battery voltage, R19 and R20. And I matched them so that they have a very close resistance. So I won't have to do any calibrating in my uh, in my software for them. All right, almost done. Just got the microcontroller here to do, and then 
the micro USB connector. So I definitely say that this tool is is handy to have. I um, I use the tweezers a little bit to kind of straighten some of them, but uh, but yeah, this is pretty nice to have. This one's got uh, a high suction and a low suction setting, and I use the low for pretty much everything except for the microcontroller, shift register, and the micro USB connector, and it worked out pretty well. Okay, now that I've got the board all filled with components, I'm going to try out this hot air station. I've got it set to uh, 275. I think that's an okay temperature to do this at, so we'll see how this goes. And it's already, uh, it's already really hot, so let's see what happens. Uh-oh, that one seemed to move a little bit. I've got the air turned down to its lowest setting. Maybe I was just holding it too close. Okay, I got the FTDI chip on there, that USB to serial converter. The, um, the solder paste was a little bit crunchy when I put it down into it, so I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. Might have to try that one again, but we'll see what happens when I get down to it. So the parts are mostly straightening themselves out. The soldering is all complete. I had to fix a lot of bridges that were created with some solder wick, but that seemed to go okay. And I did find uh, that I had the shift register on backwards, so I got that turned around. And I found that the micro USB, the pins that are, that are inside of it, are very, very hard to not get bridged. I had to take this connector off a couple times, and I finally got it so it's okay. Uh, the connector is kind of sitting at a little bit of an angle with my last attempt, but everything is, is looking okay. I just kept on using the hot air station here to... Um, to take it off and then clean it up with the solder wick and then put some more solder paste down and try again. Okay, I'm gonna try applying power now. So I'm gonna plug in a lithium polymer battery. All right, that thing's going crazy. And it's not fully charged, so when I plug this in, hopefully it starts charging. Okay, that looks good. That uh, hopefully is working. All right, the AVR Dragon was able to see the microcontroller and program it. Uh, what I did was on the, um, the circuit board, I used this staggered pattern for the, the programming port so that I could just plug in a connector like this. This has just got one of those dual row headers um, plugged into it right now. And I can just put it into the, that staggered port arrangement and it makes good enough contact so that I can get the bootloader on there. And I was able to get the Arduino bootloader on there, the um, Arduino Uno one, because I've got the 16 megahertz uh, crystal uh, on here. And after I did that, I plugged in the micro USB and the USB to serial converter worked okay. And I was able to put my little test program on there. So I'm just waiting for my soldering iron to heat up right now. And I'm going to get the, um, the rotary encoder all hooked up. 
All right, I got another test all taken care of. I did have one more solder bridge to overcome. Uh, the green LED uh, and the red LED were hooked up together on, on this guy, so I couldn't control the green one. But now it's working okay. And I've got the same program that I had on the breadboard version of this uh, installed right now. And I've got it communicating with uh, the wireless transceiver, and that's working just fine. So it looks pretty good. The um, the trans the radio I don't I don't have it soldered in yet. I just kind of got it wedged wedged in there, so I can take it out because the radio is covering up some of the mounting holes. So last thing I want to do is see what the power draw is. Hopefully, it's the same as the breadboard version. All right, I've got everything hooked up now, so I can measure the battery draw, and it is drawing six microamps or 5.9 microamps so that is fantastic all right I plugged in the uh, micro USB to charge the battery up and just make sure that that charge rate is looking okay well it is all complete all the soldering is done all the um, testing is complete it looks like it works uh, I have to say that with the hot air reflow soldering technique, you do have to fix a lot of bridging um, that occurs between pins. So that was one thing that I didn't realize was going to happen so often. Maybe there's some technique to it though, I don't know. Um, but that did happen quite a bit and that required a little bit of extra time. But overall, I was able to get the electronics for this thing put together in a fraction of the amount of time that's taken from my previous projects. Very, very little uh, wiring with this seven segment display just plugging right in and using this daughter board for the rotary encoder. Uh, that, that made it so I don't have to do all kinds of wiring on it, on it either. So I am really liking um, the speed at which I was able to get this guy together. It was a lot easier than my previous projects. And this thing is acting uh, just like a regular Arduino Uno now, and so I can begin my uh, software development. And I uh, just wanted to, to show how it, how it really does function, just like a regular Arduino. So I just pick Arduino Uno, pick the COM port, it shows up as a, a COM device. And then right now I've got the blue LED flashing in the rotary encoder. And I'll just change it to be the green one by saying uh, D5 for the LED over here. And I'll just hit the upload button. And in a second, there you go, you got your green LED. It's, uh, it's kind of funny, I've got the colon of the seven segment, seven segment display hooked up to the um, transmit pin of the USB to serial converter. So I actually can see if there's communication happening because that colon will light up. <laughs> so uh, that's my little indicator but uh, yeah that uh, boy it was it was so great for this to actually work I'm so relieved it's so much more complicated than anything else I've done before I think I've said that a million times but it is definitely the truth so I'm just gonna um, get started on the programming and then uh, the key fob this is uh, the schematic for it that I'm getting started on